Howdy. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about um, one-dimensional kinematics. Okay, so for the next couple of weeks in your physics course, um, you're going to be dealing with projectile motion. And before we start getting into some crazy, complicated projectile motion type problems, which we will, um, let's first talk about the introduction of just moving in one direction, okay, either in the x direction or solely in the y direction. Because once you can get these foundations down, the rest of it becomes really easy, okay? Now, the uh, first two equations that I want to give you are equations that you can use only if you have a constant acceleration. Now, the two equations you're going to need are your xf is equal to x naught plus v naught t plus one half a t squared where your x is just your position, okay? So this can be interchanged with a y, it can be interchanged with an r, an s, I don't care. This deals with your position, and your final position is equal to your initial position, plus v stands for velocity, so v naught times t, t is going to be for time, plus one half a, a is our acceleration, times t squared. And your second equation is vf, your final velocity, is equal to v naught plus a t, okay? Um, where v, of course, is velocity, a, of course, is your acceleration, okay? Now, here's the way that I attack these. It's important to think of x f as a function of t, okay? Your only variables are your x f and your t, your position, your time, your x naught, your v naught, your a, those are constants. They're constants you may not know, constants you may need to solve for, but nonetheless they're just constants. Your final position, along with this, your final velocity, these are varied, and it's dependent on t, your time given certain initial conditions or certain constants of your initial position, initial velocity, as well as that constant acceleration. Now, say time isn't given, and let's say uh, it's really hard to solve for something because they don't give you a time. Another equation you could have in your back pocket to help you out is that vf squared, your final velocity squared, is equal to v naught squared plus 2a times delta x, okay? Where delta x is just your change in position, okay? Um, the way you're gonna see me set up a lot of these examples when dealing with kinematics is really just like this. And if you follow this process, you're gonna be fine every single time, uh, excuse me, every single time. The first thing I do, write down everything given, okay? Always, just as I'm reading the problem, like, okay, my initial velocity is this, they said I started here, and so forth. Then, I'm going to set up these equations. I'm going to set them up because these are just functions of t. Because once the equations are set up, then I understand my question and answer for it. What's really important is to do it in this order. A lot of, most people actually that I've seen switch this. And I don't like that. They try to read the question and figure out which formula they got to use. As you get harder and harder problems, it's not going to be that simple. Instead, we're going to set up our equations and then from there, understand the questions and see from there how I can mix and match to utilize them. And you'll see when we get there. Now, these equations are great when you have a constant acceleration, but I don't. What if, what if I don't? If I don't, you're going to have to use calculus. And if you're into calculus-based physics, get ready for it. Now, I know a lot of y'all may already know how to take a derivative, but some of y'all might not. So if you already know how to take a derivative, and I'm going to talk about an antiderivative as well, you need to do both of those. You can kind of fast forward ahead. Um, but for those of y'all who don't, uh, we'll get ready to grow up real quick when it comes to knowing calculus. Now, let's say you're given some function, some f of t is equal to some a t to the n, where a and n are just some numbers, and t is my variable. The way you're going to take a derivative f prime of t is you're going to take this exponent and multiply it in front. So you're going to have a times n. And then you're going to subtract 1 from the top. So n minus 1. So let's do an example. And say that I have a f of t is 3t to the fourth. Then if I want to take the derivative of this, 
I take this 4 and multiply it in front, so 3 times 4 is 12, and then you just subtract 1 from the top, 4 minus 1, that's 3. Taking a derivative, you must become fluent with, especially if you're taking a calculus-based physics, okay? So let's talk about how to find the derivative of this. So let's go ahead and find the derivative of x of t. And so x prime of t, a little apostrophe that prime just denotes derivative. The derivative of this, well, we already know the derivative of 3t to the fourth. We already know that this is 12t cubed. Let's take a look at this uh, 5t squared. So I take this 2, multiply it in front. 2 times 5 is 10, and t. The derivative of 6t, okay, think of this t being raised to a 1. 1 times 6 is 6, but then 1 minus 1 is 0, and anything raised to the 0 is 1, and so the derivative of 6t is literally just 6. And the derivative of 10, the derivative of any number, just as a heads up, if your f of t is just a number, the derivative of any number is always 0. Okay, and so the derivative of 10 is just 0, and there's my derivative. So now that we know that, you also need to be able and be very comfortable taking antiderivatives. Okay, you need to also be perfect taking an antiderivative. Now, the way you take an antiderivative, say of the integral of some a t to the, t to the n dt, okay, where a t to the n that's my function, a and n are just numbers. The way that I like to attack this is the first thing I do is I rewrite my constant and my variable. I then add one to the top, so I'm going to have n plus 1, and then I take that number, flip it, put it in front, and you will always write plus c, plus some constant c, because in a lot of problems, you'll be required to actually solve for that c. And we'll get there, I promise, we'll get there. But, uh, so if I wanted to take a look at an actual example, the integral of 3t to the 4th, right? How would we do this? Well, uh, the derivative, or antiderivative, is you're going to rewrite your constant in your variable, so 3t. Add 1 to the top, 4 plus 1, that's 5. I'm going to take that 5, flip it, put it in front, and then plus c. Now, the derivative of any number, as we just talked about a second ago, is 0. But if you take the antiderivative of any number, you're literally just going to multiply that number by t. It's just as a heads up. Okay? So, let's uh, do this example. We already know the integral, or the antiderivative, of 3t to the 4th. We already know that to be 3 fifths t to the 5th. What about that 5t squared? Well, first thing I do, rewrite my constant and my variable. Add 1 to the top, 2 plus 1, that's 3. I take this number, flip it, put it in front. Now let's go to the 6t. So rewrite your constant in your variable. Then I add 1 to the top, 1 plus 1, that's 2. Take that 2, flip it, put it in front, just like that. And then finally, the integral or the antiderivative of 10, the antiderivative of any number, is just that number times t, and is always plus c. I would definitely recommend this 6 divided by 2, anywhere you can simplify. It's definitely 3, so it's going to be a 3t squared. Um, but this is how you take a basic antiderivative. Oops. Okay. The last thing I want to talk about before we start getting into some actual problems is knowing when to take a derivative and knowing when to integrate. What's going to happen is you'll be given three functions, some x of t, which is position, some v of t, that's velocity, and some a of t, that's acceleration. And it's vital you understand the relationship among these. If I want to go from position to velocity, or from velocity to acceleration, what you will do is you're going to take the derivative. You take the derivative to go from position down to velocity, down to acceleration. And to go the opposite direction, to go from acceleration to velocity to position, you'll take the antiderivative, which is what we just did, or integral. 
Okay, you'll take the antiderivative or integral. So make sure you know how to interchange among the two. I know that was a long introduction, but this is going to be the foundation for all kinematics. I don't care if it's 1D, I don't care if it's 2D. So go ahead, join me in the next several videos, and then we'll do some actual problems utilizing this as our foundation to answer all types of kinematic problems.